the Wind Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Pan Long, by I E Tomatoes. Please support the author by buying the original book on the link below. Book 16. Star Mist Sea, Chapter 27, Secret Area. Left Miluo Island? Linley was suspicious as soon as he heard this. Only a few days had passed since that last great battle, and Cecily had married Secra not too long ago. How could she suddenly leave Miluo Island? Even if she had truly left, others should have seen it. But in the past few days, he had asked many people. None of them knew anything about Cecily, nor had they seen her. He is lying. Linley decided. Why was he lying? Instantly, Linley had a terrible premonition in his mind. Everyone, follow me. We're heading out. Sikra's face was extremely sinister looking right now. After speaking, he led the group of people deep towards Suncutter Peak. Although Linley felt suspicious in his heart, he still followed. Suncutter Peak. Linley's group of nine floated into it. Moments later, Linley's group arrived at a deep cavernous tunnel, without a hint of sunlight within it. Sikra was the first to enter the deep tunnel, while Linley's group of eight hesitated slightly, then entered as well. Young Master Sikra. A high had said through divine sense. Where exactly is this secret area? This tunnel seems to be bottomlessly deep. Just follow me, Sikra said calmly. Lily and Lomia followed quite calmly. What was that to fear? This Sikra was right in front of them, and either of them could easily kill Sikra. They didn't need to fear Sikra playing any tricks at all. In addition, Linley had learned from Taros that the hidden area contained sky recordings. Linley. A voice rang out in Linley's mind. Linley turned to glance at the nearby Lomio. Just now, the one who had sent him the mental message was Lomio. Lomio's lips curved upwards, and he continued to chat through divine sense. When I saw you fight, I became certain that the four divine beasts clan really lives up to its fame. Might I ask how strong the other three branches of the four divine beasts clan are? Why so many questions? Linley responded. In truth, Linley himself knew very little regarding the four divine beasts clan. Right. There's no need to ask. I'll know once I've truly fought with them. After we exit this secret area, let's first have a little spa. Afterwards, I'll head to the Indigo Prefecture of the Bloodridge Continent to seek out the experts of the other three branches of your four Divine Beasts clan and compete with them. Although Lomio's face was calm, his eyes were shining. Lomio was very eager to battle against other experts. Linley couldn't help but feel a headache coming. As soon as he left the secret room, he would have to compete against this madman. It wasn't that Linley didn't like to compete, it was that Linley knew his own strength and weakness. It wasn't so bad if he ran into an expert who specialized in material attacks, but if he encountered an expert in soul attacks, it would be terrible. Linley cursed inwardly, this guy, Uck. He's even crazier than that Lea month was. As soon as he encounters an expert, he wants to challenge them. While chatting with Lomio through divine sense, given the speed at which Linley was advancing, they had gone multiple kilometers. The strange thing was, however, that despite having gone down many kilometers into the cavern, there was still no end in sight. Given this depth, we should be deep within Miluo Island. Linley guessed to himself. Suddenly, Linley discovered that the corridor beneath them was completely filled with water. It's all water down there. 
Are we still going down? Someone couldn't help but ask. Just follow me and cut out the chit chat. Sikra was feeling very unhappy right now. Linley's words at Sun Cutter Peak had made his mood turn terrible those words which Cecily had said before dying made him feel even more insulted than when he had discovered that Cecily had another person's son in her womb. Drip, drip. Linley's group followed Sikra into the water, and the eight of them all formed protective coverings around their bodies, easily blocking the water. Back then, I should have asked Taros in detail as to what place this secret area actually is. Linley felt puzzled. This waterlogged passage had cave walls covered with green vegetation. Clearly, this passage had been filled with water for a long, long time. Suddenly, the tunnel beneath them became smooth, and at the end of this smooth tunnel, a faint glow could be seen. We finally reached the end. Linley couldn't help but feel a sense of celebration. As soon as they exited the tunnel, however, they saw a world of endless, boundless water. A? Eh? The secret area is actually in the middle of the ocean? Linley couldn't help but speak out in. Astonishment. Secret sneered. Are you puzzled? Linley discovered that ever since he asked that question, Sikra's face had continuously been ugly to behold, and his temper had turned irritable as well. Linley couldn't be bothered to reply. Arguing with Sikra was something that simply wasn't worth it. After flying at the bottom of the sea for some time, Linley was stunned. Off the distance, an enormous black castle that was dozens of kilometers in circumference had been erected at the bottom of the ocean, like a massive monster lying in wait. The amazing thing was, countless, densely clustered figures could be seen around the castle on patrol. The number of people here was extremely high. This is the secret area of our western part of the island, Sikra said proudly. The secret area of my Bagshaw clan. You are very lucky to have the chance to come here. As he spoke, from the distance, a squad of black armored warriors dressed with black cloaks flew over. Seeing this squad, Linley and the others all felt a sense of shock in their hearts. These ten guards all naturally emanated a baleful aura, and their faces were all expressionless and cold. Each of them is an expert. Linley was incomparably shocked. Compared to the warriors of Miliuo Island, these black armored and black cloaked guards gave off a far more powerful, valiant, remorseless aura. Even Lomio narrowed his eyes, looking carefully at the distant black castle. A single clan actually has so many forces. Linley felt stunned. He could see, with the naked eye, thousands of people, each of them high heads, and excellent high heads at that. They weren't on the same level as the island guards, who were made up of just any high heads who wanted to join. Young Master Sikra, the leader of the squad bowed. They all came. Let's go, Sikra said calmly. The ten black armored guards immediately guided Linley's group towards the black castle. The gates to the black castle were open. This black castle had existed for unknowable amounts of time, deep at the bottom of the sea. The strange thing was. The black castle seemed to have a sort of strange energy. It actually was able to keep the waters of the sea at a distance, making all the sea water unable to get within a kilometer of the black castle. It was as though a translucent barrier was protecting the castle, keeping all the sea water at a distance. And thus Linley's group suddenly entered a waterless area. Hey! Everyone was astonished, while Lomio's eyes lit up in excitement as well. Linley turned to carefully look, but he wasn't able to find any special barrier. There really are all sorts of marvels in the world. As he entered the Black Castle and saw the many guards within the Black Castle, Linley was stunned. This dot is most likely the true power of the Bagshaw clan, Linley said to himself. Within the Black Castle. An empty plaza. 
Lily's group of eight was waiting here. Wait here a while. Later, people will come. Sikra said emotionlessly. You'll have to be tested to see if you will have the chance to enter the secret area. After speaking, Sikra himself turned and left. His assignment was complete. Tested? Some people were instantly puzzled. Wasn't it said that as long as we can win a hundred victories, we'll be able to go to the secret area for a viewing? Why is there a test? Hearing this discourse, Lomio and Linley both maintained their silence. Linley knew all along that there would be a test, and he stared at the area around him. The buildings around this plaza also had roving patrols of black armored guards, and the entire castle was like a military fort, under extremely tight guard. Just moments later, the ancient, dark blue gates in front of the plaza that were ten meters tall up rumbled opened. Kriyuak. The opening of the dark blue gates caused a very unpleasant, scraping sound. Six people walked out from inside the gates, the leader a man with white hair, a white beard, red armor, and a red cloak. The five behind him were all black armored warriors, but they too wore red cloaks. Welcome. The white-haired elder immediately strode forward and laughed clearly, welcome to Castle Hensi, Handisai. Let me introduce myself. My name is Uria, you lie. Castle Hensi? A hint of suspicion arose in Linley's heart. Although all victors of a hundred battles in the arena can come to this secret area, Uriel laughed, the sky recordings within the secret area aren't just shown to everyone. If you want to view them, you must undergo testing. Sky recordings? Of what? Lomio said. Battles of seven star fiends. Battles of Azuras. Interplanar wars. Even sky recordings of a sovereign showing his might. Uria smiled. This has been accumulated by my Bagshaw clan over countless years. As soon as these words came out, everyone's eyes lit up. Even Lomio's eyes were shining. Linley sighed to himself. These sky recordings of experts doing battle was indeed a very alluring prospect. Now, all of you come, one at a time, to compete against our people. Based on your performance, I will judge if you are qualified to go in for a viewing. Uria glanced at a person next to him, and immediately, a callous bald man wearing black armor and a red cloak strode forward. Uria stretched out with his hand pointing towards one of the hired victors. You first. Fine. That high good who had won a hundred arena victories chuckled twice, then stepped forward. If I kill him, don't blame me. This high head was dressed in a blue robe and had thick eyebrows. If you can kill him, feel free to. Uriel laughed calmly. Immediately, this blue-robed tiger and the bald man moved to the center of the plaza. The two faced each other. You can start now. Uria gave the order. Boom. The blue-robed tiger instantly transformed into a flash of fiery light that didn't emit flames, with the scorching heat causing even the air to crackle. And then, the flameless firelight immediately formed into a fiery arrowhead, which hovered there in midair in the plaza, emanating a heart-shaking power. Swoosh. The arrow of flame suddenly shot out like a meteor. Hem. The bald man gave a low snort, his entire body immediately becoming covered by an earthen yellow armor. His enormous fist began to be covered with rippling light, and he astonishingly landed a direct punch towards that fiery missile. Bang. A low, rumbling sound. Even the arena itself trembled. The rippling light on the fist of that bald man had been shattered, and even his fist had been blown apart. Even the layer of earth and yellow armor on his body was cracked, and he couldn't help but take several steps back, cracking the ground as he did. The fiery red missile collapsed as well. 
That blue robed Tyhid's face was ashen, but he was still standing there. Not bad. The white haired Uri nodded. You are qualified to enter the second secret room. The second secret room? The blue robed Tyhid was puzzled. Right. The secret area is divided into two rooms, the first room and the second room. The first room has more sky recordings, and the experts in those recordings are more powerful. Uria said calmly. Then what must I do to be qualified to enter the first room? The blue robed Hyad was rather unwilling to accept this. Kill him in one blow. Uria pointed towards the bald man. The blue robed high had instantly gave up. Hearing this, Linley was stunned. Can it be that the leader of this castle doesn't treat life as having any value? He can so casually sacrifice even his own people? You are next. Uria pointed to a god. Enough of this. A cold voice rang out. Lomia directly strode forward, looking calmly at Uria. Let me go first. Didn't you say that if I could kill him with one blow, I can enter the first room, right? Uria glanced at Lomio in surprise, then laughed. You are Lomio, right? Lomio nodded calmly. You don't need to be tested. Uria shook his head and laughed. Of the eight of you, you and Redrobe Delda, Linley, don't need to be tested. You can go directly to the first room for viewing. Linley couldn't help but laugh. However, opening the secret room is a very important matter. We have to make a request to the master of the castle, and then find a good time. You can go rest for now. We will soon notify you. As he spoke, Uria arranged for people to guide Linley and Lomio away. As Linley was led away by the black armored, red cloaked guard, he now understood. It isn't that the leader of the castle doesn't care about the lives of his men. It is that when a real expert comes, there's no need for a test. Linley was quite eagerly anticipating that moment of viewing those sky images coming as soon as possible. The black castle was very large. It had thick, sturdy walls, and a very complicated layout of many corridors. Captain Mob, Mobu, I've been here for nearly a month. Why isn't his lordship willing to meet me yet? Don't be in such a hurry. If his lordship wishes to meet you, he will. Otherwise, just wait here. Hearing this voice from a corridor up ahead, Linley couldn't help but frown. This voice is so familiar. In front of Linley were four corridors. Two people headed out from one of the corridors, and one of them was a man who wore a long green robe and had fish scales on his face. He was currently with another man, one dressed in black armor and a red cloak, who the first man was constantly speaking to. And then, the two of them entered another one of the corridors. Ganmontin? Linley's face was filled with disbelief. Why is he here? This person was the exact same person who had waylaid and attacked Linley's group in the Starmist Sea, the person who had wanted to offer Olivier to his Lord Commander. Ganmontin. Book 16. Starmist Sea, Chapter 28, The Secret. Originally, Ganmontin had wanted to forcibly take Olivier away, but Linley had refused. Thus, Ganmontin and Linley had battled against each other. At that time, 
Lin Li had relied upon his Blackstone space to execute Ganwinton's Divine Wind clone, but who would have thought that Ganwinton actually had a Divine Water clone as well? Ganmonton naturally hated Linley to the core. Linley still clearly remembered Ganmonton's dying bellow. You can't kill me. If you kill me, the Lord Commander will definitely kill you. Ganmonton had, back then, used the so-called Lord Commander to threaten Linley. He went to find the Lord Commander. And he is now here. Can it be that the Lord Commander is right here? Linley frowned. This mysterious seafloor castle. Castle Hensey. The white haired elder who had welcomed him had once said, opening the secret room was a matter of great importance. We need to request permission from the master of the castle. Master of the castle? Linley bonded. The people which Uriah had brought were all roughly around the level of six star fiend in power. Then Aria's power. The power of the master of the castle. Ganmontin's so-called commander. The master of the castle. In that instant, Linley suddenly thought of a possibility. As soon as he thought of this possibility, Linley only felt a sense of terror fill his mind. His entire body couldn't help but tremble, and his face instantly turned white. Can it be? That I'm like a lamb who has delivered himself into the mouth of a tiger? That I've come to throw my life away? Linley pondered. From the number of experts at Miluo Island and the number of experts on display here at the seafloor Castle Hensey, Linley could tell that this master of Castle Hensey was, without a doubt, an ultimate expert who possessed astonishing power. In the Infernal Realm, a person who had great status had to have an equivalent, matching amount of power. Otherwise, others wouldn't submit to them. A. Lomio, who was traveling alongside Linley, naturally noticed that Linley currently seemed rather off. He glanced at Linley, puzzled. What had caused Linley to lose his bearings like this? Fortunately, the person leading them didn't turn to look at Linley, and didn't know what had happened. My lords, once we arrive at the guest houses, we'll be nearly there. The black armored red cloaked warrior laughed as he spoke, his words causing Linley to be startled awake from his pondering. Linley immediately began to adjust his mindset. After all, the situation hadn't become utterly disastrous yet. Even assuming that the master of the castle was the commander, which he might even be, this person had never met Linley. One thing at a time, Linley said to himself. The seafloor castle Hensey was like a small city, filled with intersecting corridors that divided it into many areas. Generally speaking, guests all stayed in one area, which had a number of two-story buildings that were all built in a similar fashion. These small buildings were built with a type of rice yellow stones, and made one feel quite comfortable within the black castle. Lord Lomio, you will stay here in room 26. Lord Linley, you will stay here in room 27. The black armored, red cloaked warrior said respectfully. When the time comes, someone will deliver food to you. As for when you will enter the secret room, please don't be impatient my lords. When the time comes, there will be people who will come notify you." Lamia frowned. Are we just supposed to wait here indefinitely? Linley felt rather uncomfortable as well. My lords, don't worry. Based on our long established rules, in roughly half a day or so, you'll be invited to the secret area. At the slowest, it would only take three days. The guard smiled as he spoke. Right. Lomio nodded calmly. At most, three days? Lomio wouldn't mind. But Linley minded. You can go now. Linley stepped back from the guard, feeling rather concerned, because the more time he spent here at Castle Hensey, the more dangerous it was. After all, Ganmonton was within this castle. 
Lingli, I'll go to my room for now. If you need anything, you can come find me. Lomio said, then immediately turned and entered his room, not giving Linley a chance to reply. Lomio was normally a very arrogant, solitary figure. It was only because he had seen Linley fight and wanted to spar with Linley that he was now so courteous. Otherwise, why would he say so many things to Linley? But Linley's mind was preoccupied with Ganmuntin, and so he didn't have any energy to bother with Lomio. He turned and went to his own room as well. Taking a meditative stance on the stone bed, he looked through the window to the outside. I had wanted to come watch the sky recordings of battling experts, but who would have imagined that Ganmuntin was here? Linley sighed to himself. At this time, footsteps rang out from outside, followed by a knocking on the door. Enter, Linley said calmly. The door opened. Immediately, two beautiful women dressed in bright yellow robes walked into Linley's room, carrying a large platter of food. You can just leave it on the table, Linley said calmly. Yes, my lord. The two maids were very respectful. They gently set down the platter of delicacies, but Linley suddenly raised his head to look at them. Has the examination of those who had come alongside us concluded? One of the maids said respectfully, Yes, my lord. The examination is complete. Of those six lords, two of them have already returned to Miluo Island, while the other four are living here, not too far from you, my lord. Oh. Linley understood. Of the six, two were like Dylan, they had been refused and shut out and weren't going to be permitted to enter the secret room. You can go now, Linley instructed. The two maids curtsied, then left. As for the platter of delicacies, Linley didn't take a single bite. He didn't have any appetite or desire to enjoy delicacies right now. Whether fortune or disaster. If it's a disaster, I won't be able to avoid it anyhow. Linley shut his eyes quietly meditating. Castle Hendzi. Currently, that red-armored, red-cloaked old man with white hair, Uria, was currently walking on a tightly controlled and restricted corridor. Rumble. A great door covered with all sorts of mystical runic carvings swung open, revealing a narrow walkway. Uria continued in. And then, the two guards at each side of the door immediately closed it again. The walls on each side of the walkway had some carvings, either of thousands of soldiers doing battle, or two figures dueling each other in midair. At the end of the walkway was a wide, empty throne room. On one end of the throne room, there was an enormous fireplace. Uria walked to the end of the fireplace and pressed a button, immediately causing a wide corridor made completely from a blood-red stone to be revealed. This blood-red corridor had a deathly aura about it that made one's heart tremble. Uria took a deep breath, then stepped into the wide, hidden tunnel. The tunnel wasn't very large. At the end, there was a blood-red door with black edges that was 10 meters tall and 6 meters wide. The entire gate faintly emanated a red glow. Uria didn't dare take another step forward. Teacher. Uria said in a low voice. Hem. The examination is done. A low, gentle voice rang out from past the door. Uria said respectfully, Teacher, nothing out of the ordinary happened. The other six didn't have any special abilities or potential. However, Teacher. Those two you paid attention to should be very strong. I, your disciple, personally witnessed Lomio's battles in the arena. He is definitely on a seven-star fiend level. As for that red-robed elder, Linley, he was able to easily defeat the red-robed elder, Boslo. There's no need to say anything further. Hem. The person inside made a non-committal sound. Uria hesitated a moment, puzzled, then asked, Teacher, 
that Linli is a descendant of the Four Divine Beasts clan. Four Divine Beasts clan? The low voice suddenly began to laugh. Ha ha dot if this was 10,000 years ago, I'd be concerned. However, the Four Divine Beasts clan, at present, wouldn't dare come irritate me. There's no need for me to be concerned. However, for him to possess a drop of sovereigns might means that this Linley should be an important figure within the Four Divine Beasts clan. Unfortunately, the present is the present, not 10,000 years ago. Tomorrow, bring Linley and Lomio in to see me. Let Lomio come in first, then let Linley come in. The low voice instructed. Yes, teacher. Uria said respectfully. After waiting a few moments without any response, Uria added respectfully, then I'll leave now. You can go. Uria immediately bowed, then left, not worried about his teacher at all. Sovereign's might? A drop of Sovereign's might was indeed powerful, but his teacher was at the highest level one could be at, beneath the Sovereign level. Forget about just a drop of Sovereign's might. Even that ultimate expert, Lord Akins of the Redbud Continent, who was able to refine Sovereign's might from Ink's tones was someone his teacher didn't fear. Sovereign's might, in the hands of different people, have different amounts of power as well. Uria clearly remembered the words his teacher had once said to him. At present, Linley was seated with his eyes closed, while people would occasionally cross by from outside on the street. Most were maids and guards. But of course, occasionally some guests would pass by as well, and each time they did. Linley would open his eyes. Ganmantin is a guest. He should live in this area as well, Linley said to himself. Judging from his conversation with that captain, Ganmantin clearly is waiting to see that so-called lord. Quietly, silently, time flowed on. Although they were at the bottom of the sea and unable to tell whether it was day or night, Linley could clearly calculate in his mind if it was time for the sun to rise or the sun to fall. It was night, now. Suddenly, footsteps came from the street, outside the window, Linley still opened his eyes, looking outside the window carefully. A figure walked past the window. Linley's eyes instantly lit up. Him. Although he only caught a glimpse of the man, Linley immediately recognized him. It was Ganmantin. With but a thought, a human figure appeared in Linley's room. It was one of Linley's death yard golems. Swoosh. The death that Gollum instantly appeared outside the door, looking towards the street. The death that Gollum wasn't a living creature. It only had a hint of Linley's consciousness within it. At the doorway, it stared at the distant Ganmantin, who didn't notice anything. But of course, if it had been Linley himself staring at Ganmantin, he would have noticed. A death that Gollum, in the end, wasn't a living creature. It was just an object. Who would care about an object? I didn't expect that this Ganmantin would be here as well. Linley, through the death at Gullum, could clearly see Ganmantin enter a little two-story building that was 800 meters or so away from them. It made sense. Ganmantin had arrived a month earlier, after all. It made sense that he lived here. A killing look flashed past Linley's eyes. Ganmanton hasn't yet had a chance to meet with his lord. It's best to remove this potential source of disaster early on. If Ganmanton was allowed to remain alive, it would be very dangerous for Lily as well as Olivier. It was better to remove him immediately. The roving patrols of Castle Hensey didn't keep a very strict patrol watch on the guest living area. In addition, even if they kept strict watch, it didn't matter. Whoosh. The death that Gullum entered the interspatial ring, while Linley himself instantly arose, his body immediately fusing with the ground. World walking. Linley didn't dare to emanate any hint of an aura. 
Immediately using world walking, he reached the window below that two-story building, but as soon as he arrived, Linley heard Ganwintin cursing loudly. Hem, a group of bastards. They knew that my divine wind clone was destroyed so they all looked down on me. After talking to them for so long, all of them are still delaying. Most likely his lordship doesn't even know that I'm here. Ganmontin had a belly full of fire right now, and thus was currently cursing in his room. He came here wanting to meet the Lord Commander, but now that his power had greatly dropped after losing his Divine Wind clone, those old friends of his all looked down at him. It was like pressing his warm face against their icy buttocks, how could he possibly not be upset? Mother Earthka, it's all that Linley's fault. Ganmontin would forever remember Linley, who had destroyed his powerful Divine Wind clone. Once the Lord Commander knows that there is a soul mutant god, he will definitely intervene. That Linley will definitely die. Ganmontin ground his teeth. All right. I'll have the Lord Commander use his soul seed to control Linley and live for millions of years without freedom, and then be killed. Linley, hearing Ganmontin's cursing from outside the window, felt his heart tremble. Souls eat control? Linley clearly remembered that when he had been at the Yulan continent, his old friend, Boss Yale, had once been controlled in such a manner. People controlled through a souls eat had their own memory, but were completely devoted to serving their master. Souls eat control? Thoughts flashed like lightning through Lingley's mind. He instantly thought of a possibility. Why would Miluo Island be so generous as to allow the victors of a hundred battles in the arena to come here and look at the precious sky recordings of their clan? Why would Miluo Island permit the red-robed elders to come to this secret area? This Ganmontin is hunting for experts with great potential for his Lord Commander. Why does this Lord Commander want experts with high potential? If he was to train them, how could he be assured of their loyalty? Also, why are so many Seven Star Fiends willingly serving Bagshaw's clan? Why are Seven Star Fiends so loyal to the Bagshaw clan? And also, Taros and Dylan. When Caesar was about to be killed by Sequa, why had they actually, unbelievably, chosen to throw their lots in with the Bagshaw clan's side. In addition, the two of them just so happened to have come here before as well. Linley's face instantly turned white. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and Peace. Wind Pay.